Hey, I'm Drew. Um, I tutor a number of topics in mathematics, but today we're working with a calculus word problem um, by, that was posted here. Um, there's a lot to go through in this problem, so we're probably not going to get super into detail, but I'll hit a lot of the major points. So the problem goes, um, there is a train that carries currently 20,000 people between two cities. The train can serve up to 31,000 people. Um, the cost uh, to ride per person or the fare is, now they put pi dollars, I don't know if this is a typo, but we're gonna go with it, uh, which is about $3.14. Um, each, uh, each fare increase of about two cents decreases the ridership by about 271 people. And we're given a number of questions here. So whenever we're looking to, you know, create a mathematical model of any kind, in this case, um, with everything going on here, uh, we really, first thing we're concerned about is the variables that we're working with. So um, in this case, the, the big ones that we care about are the total revenue, which we're gonna call R. So this is the total revenue. Um, another one I'm really concerned about is um, the number of people that um, are gonna be writing at, uh, the train at any time. So we're gonna call that uh, passengers, I guess number of passengers. Um, and then of course the fare, which we'll call F here. Um, now in the problem here, we created a function uh, that represents um, the this revenue in terms of X. In this case, X would be the number of increases of two cents. So this is a number of two cent increases here. Oh, this is quite messy here. Um, number of two cent increases. So we know we're going to have to do this in terms of X here. And the thing that uh, is interesting here is that we notice that the number of passengers and the fare actually change depending on the fare and how the fare changes. So uh, in this case, the passengers, what we're given is the number of passengers starts at 20,000 and it decreases each time this uh, goes up by two. So each time X increases. So uh, it decreases by 271 people each time X increases. So this is our equation for, for P. Our fare also says here, now this is a little bit more straightforward because the fare starts at pi dollars, right? And clearly if we're increasing the fare, it increases. So we add two cents each time X increases. So these are our equations for P and F. When we plug this into this, I, the idea of um, that we should kind of have an, a general idea about, which is revenue being the number of passengers times the fare, which is P times F. When we plug all this in and we plug these into this equation, uh, we get here, and I'm going to bypass all of the algebra here, that the revenue is, a, is going to be negative 5.42x squared um, plus... 400 minus 271 pi times x and plus 20,000 pi. So this is going to be our equation for the revenue, which is the first part of this question here. So the second one says, given restraints, what's the domain of the function? So the domain of the function, if you remember, is all the values of the independent variable for which the dependent variable makes sense. Um, in this case, we have a lot of constraints placed on us. Uh, by the real world, right? So for instance, um, we're never gonna have negative number of riders, right? So we know that this P value is gonna be greater than or equal to zero, right? But we're also given that the train can serve up to 31,000 people, which means that it also has to be less than or equal to 31,000, right? The other constraint we have is the fare. Now, the reasonable constraint that we can put on here, an assumption that we can put on here, is that the train company is not gonna be paying people <laughs> to ride the train. So we're gonna assume that the fare is also gonna be greater than or equal to zero. Um, now, because we have equations in terms of X for P and F, we can plug these into here and solve these inequalities to get some sort of range of X. One other thing to keep in mind is that X is the number of fare increases, right? So we're gonna make another assumption that X is discrete. In other words, it's gonna be a whole number of some kind of integer. So when we do all of that, we end up getting that X is somewhere between about negative 40 and 74. So this right here is gonna represent our domain of the function here. So that's the second one done. Now, the third question is where the calculus comes in. So what fare should be charged to maximize revenue? 
Well, we have the equation for revenue, and when we're talking about maximizing revenue, it's an optimization problem. And we use derivatives to figure this out. So if you were to try to uh, graph this function, you would kind of, it would look something kind of like this, like an upside down parabola, because we have a negative here in front of the x squared term. So um, the, to maximize the revenue, we have to see what's the highest point of this graph, which is kind of right about here, right? Um, and our calculus tells us uh, that if we take the derivative of this function, it's going to give us the slopes at all points in, the, in this graph or on the function here. And there's only one point here where this is zero, which is right about there, which is which coincides with the maximum here. So if we do that, it'll give us a value of x um, that we can work with. So we take the derivative of this. In other words, we take the derivative of r with respect to x. When we do that here, uh, we're going to get this um, this new equation, which is negative uh, 10.84x plus 400 minus 271 pi. Um, we use the uh, product rule here for this. So we have now our derivative. So to find this, we have to see where that derivative is zero. So we set this equal to zero. And then we solve for x. So this is some basic algebra here. And we get that x is somewhere around about negative 42. And um, when we, um, yes, yes, around negative 42, I'm pretty about there. So when we, we have x, but this doesn't answer our question. The answer is, uh, the, the question is, what fare should be charged to maximize revenue? Well, we have an x, and the fare, which is f, is in terms of x. So we plug that in. So we plug this x equals negative 42 into f, and we get that f is somewhere around about $2.30. So that's the fare to maximize revenue in this case. The last part here it says if each rider costs the rail service about 10 cents, what fare should be charged uh, to maximize profit? Well, we're going to add a couple new variables, which is profit, right, which I'm going to call R sub P. And so profit, um, we know, is the total revenue that the company has minus the cost. So C, we're going to be calling cost. And our cost, as it says here, is 10 cents per person. So it's 0 0.10 times the number of people, um, which when we plug this in in terms of this P value over here, we get about, not about, we get exactly 2,000 minus 27.1x. So plugging all this in, we get that this new um, uh, profit e uh, equation is going to look something like negative 5.42x squared plus 4 point, or excuse me, uh, 427.1 minus 271 pi um, plus 20,000 pi minus 2,000. Um, it's kind of messy, but you, you get the idea. And we're going to do the exact same thing we did in the previous one. We take the derivative of this function with respect to x. And when we do that, we get this new function, which is negative 10.84x plus 427.1 minus 271 pi. Again, setting that equal to zero. And solving for x, again, some basic algebra here, uh, we get that x is equal to n around negative 39. I'm, I'm, again, omitting, I'm rounding because um, we, we want x to be a whole number. And then lastly, we want to maximize profit, and it's asking for a fare. So we then plug that back into our f equation, and we get that f is somewhere around 2.36. So this is our fare here to maximize our profits, which is about $2.36. So we went kind of quickly through that. Um, we're a little bit over time, but hopefully that helped a little bit. If you have any more questions about all of this and opt optimization problems, please let me know. Good luck.